Lizzie Post once sent a text message checking in on a friend with a new baby. The response came late, a full year later. Would her great-great-grandmother, the prolific writer and titan of American etiquette Emily Post, be horrified? The younger Post says she doesn't think so. I feel like her personality would have been one where if you weren't offended by the disconnection, then of course you would welcome the reconnection, the younger Post said. If the disconnection offended you, then either don't respond or let someone know it was a problem. Either take ownership of it or let it go. During her career spanning the first half of the 20th century, Emily Post adjusted her etiquette advice to reflect a changing society, says the younger Post, who co-wrote the 19th and 20th editions of the book, Emily Post's Etiquette. And that approach may be the only hope we have to make sense of texting, which now props up much of our social and professional lives. Agreed-upon texting rules have imploded amid a global pandemic, social media apps and the breakdown of work-life boundaries. Search TikTok for, texting etiquette, and you'll find contradictory advice. Is it rude to let a text sit or rude to expect a response? Is the thumbs up emoji passive-aggressive? Does an all-caps message demand an all-caps response? Generational differences make things even harder. As teens progress from literal to ironic emoji use while our aunts keep replying, OK. Texting has become our default mode of communication, says Justin Santamaria, who led the development of Apple's texting service iMessage back in the early 2010s. What may once have been a letter, voicemail, phone call or email now often arrives in a text, and that collapse of contexts makes it tough to know which rules to follow. Wondering what texting wisdom has survived the past few years? Here's what the experts told us. If you have texting rules you live by, send them our way at your help desk at washpost.com. Michelle Markowitz, co-author of, Hey Ladies, The Story of Eight Best Friends, One Year, and Way, Way Too Many Emails, a book about off-the-rails group messages, said she's tossed aside plenty of traditional texting wisdom. That this should have been a phone call, thinking is over. She loves writing and reading long messages. Type a novella with your thumbs. And she's given up on texting teenage relatives. It's easier to find them on Instagram or somewhere. That's where they seem truly alive, she said. But some texting manners are here to stay, especially when it comes to group chats. In, Hey Ladies. Markowitz and her co-author Caroline Moss mine the many ways group communication goes awry. Group texts spawn hundreds of notifications, they're often filled with strangers, and those threads never go away. I'm pretty sure I'm still in a group chat for my college theater production of Brent.